Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back to the fourth day of my week featuring Penny Black. Today I'm going to use this beautiful stamp by Penny Black. This is called Potted Flowers and it's such a gorgeous stamp that all you have to do is to just stamp it, use your favorite coloring method and you have a stunning card for any occasion. Now I'm going to take it a step further and I'm going to show you how you can turn that into a dimensional card just because I love dimension. I'm using my Misty Stamping Tool to stamp my image and I am working on a watercolor paper just because I will be using my Tombow markers later on. So I am stamping my image by using archival ink in black because this is going to be permanent and it's not going to smudge or smear when I will be using my Tombow markers. So now I'm working with my Tombow markers. These are water based so you can dilute them with water which means that you can uh, work with them as if they are watercolor uh, markers. Just use a brush, dip it in water and uh, you can uh, move the color easily. Other, another way to use it is just like I am doing today. I, instead of using uh, water I will be blending my colors directly on my paper. So I, in this case I am using two different shades of green, a darker and a lighter one and I'm doing the blending on my paper. It works perfectly fine if you work on top of a watercolor paper. So as you can see I have colored all my leaves and the stems by using the technique I've shown you previously and I will use the exact same technique to color my flowers. Now if you notice I have stamped the flowers twice and I'm planning to color them both in exactly the same way as I am planning to cut out one of them and pop it on top of the other. If uh, you are planning to cover up a part of an image with another one popped up, then you don't really need to do any shading, just like I am doing here on this pink flower. I am going to do all the shading on the flower that I am going to cut out and pop on top. I still need to have a solid color just underneath, so when you flip the card you don't see just a stamped line. I haven't used my Tombos for quite a while, I totally forgot about them and since I have many mediums to color my images I try to move from one to another just to give all my supplies some love and they don't feel so neglected. So anyway, I really love how these Tombos uh, work together on top of a watercolor paper, they give you beautiful results and I believe that uh, they are really effortless. Now as always you will find a full list of all the supplies that I used today down below in the description area as well as on my blog. Now I am going to put on some music and uh, let you see how I colored parts of this image and I will catch you back once everything is ready. And now as you can see I have colored everything, all my images are ready to go. I am going to apply some tumbled glass with my blending tool just very softly over everything. It's such a soft color that is not going to cover up whatever I have colored already, but it's going to add that touch of blue at the background. Before you go ahead and do this blending technique, make sure that uh, all the color on your page is totally dry, otherwise it might smear. Just to make sure that everything is dry, quick heat it with your heat gun. Now, although it doesn't look much, when I place a white card just next to it, you can see the difference. So I have my background ready to go. I am planning to create a frame for my image and I will use one of those uh, Tonic Studios dies. I am actually going to use the second larger one. 
and I am going to place it inside another rectangle die so that I can create a frame. Now I am going to place that uh, rectangle die on top of uh, my image just to measure uh, where about that frame is going to fall. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to remove the inside die. I'm going to secure my outside die with uh, my post-it tape and then I'm going to run it through my big shot. So now I have a nice panel which is slightly smaller than a standard card. So when I stick that on top of my card, it's going to leave a nice frame. Just because I used uh, a watercolor paper which is quite thick, I decided to run it twice through my uh, Sizzix just to make sure that everything is cut out nicely. Now I have those um, the combination of my dies, one inside the other. I am making sure that I secured them nicely. I have also made sure that I have aligned them correctly, one inside the other. So everything, all the borders are nice and even. I am currently running them through my die cutting machine and you can see here the result. You can uh, use the inside for another card, but uh, for this card I'm go only going to use the frame which I think is just lovely. I am planning to stick that on top of my panel and I am going to add some foam tape at the back to raise it just a little bit. So as you can see I am using my scissors to cut my foam tape thinner so that it fits at the back. And I placed my frame directly on top of my card base. So you can see it's just a little bit raised. Now I'm going to take my scissors and uh, do some fuzzy cutting. I'm going to cut out all those uh, flowers as well as uh, the two of the butterflies. Now I find fuzzy cutting really relaxing and uh, I love doing it. But uh, if you don't like fuzzy cutting, you really don't have to do that. This is a step that's totally optional. The card would look beautiful just as it is with uh, the colored image and that beautiful frame all around. But um, you know me, I like uh, dimension. So I am going to cut out all those images and then use some foam scores at the back to pop them directly on top of each flower. And I think that this uh, flower garden design is uh, so gorgeous. It uh, really makes uh, a great card and you can use it for pretty much any occasion. It could be a great uh, happy birthday card, but you can use it even for a get well card, for an anniversary card, pretty much everything. And you can color the flowers and the pots in the favorite colors of the recipient. Now I'm going to add uh, the butterflies as well. So I'm adding just a touch of uh, matte medium at the center of the butterfly. And before I stick down my butterflies, I am going to make sure that the wings are curled up just a little bit. And as I am sticking my wings down, just to remind you that uh, Penny Black has a giveaway for you. So make sure to visit my blog to learn all about it. So my main panel is pretty much finished. I am going to do some finishing touches now with my white gel pen. I hope you can see the dimension that I got. I think this is such a pretty card. Now I am adding some polka dots on some of uh, the pots which is going to make my design look even cuter and then I am just going to add some highlights on the flowers and the butterflies as well. Now just because I am working with a white gel pen on top of uh, Tombos or uh, if you would work on top of any watercolor uh, medium then um, you will see that as the time passes and uh, the gel dries, the white gel dries, it's going to be more subtle because it kind of absorbs the color from underneath. So it's not going to be as vibrant as it looks at the moment. So I keep on adding my highlights, uh, mainly at the tips of uh, the petals. I am also going to add some dots at the center of my sunflower. Now for my card base I am going with a standard size card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. It is a top folding card and I used bright yellow for my card base. I am adding some tape adhesive at the back of my panel and I'm going to stick that directly on top of my card. You will see that the panel just like I mentioned before is slightly smaller than the standard card. So this is going to leave me a nice yellow border all around. And to finish my card, all that's left to do is to add the sentiment. For that I just stamped happy birthday. I have cut it out with a die that gives a nice fish tail on both ends. And I'm going to stick it at the very bottom of my frame. But uh, of course this card would work just like I said before for any occasion. So just change the sentiment and you have a beautiful card. 
So that was the card for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Here are some close-up photos of the cards that I made today. Don't forget to visit me tomorrow for the last day of my week featuring Penny Black. And if you need more inspiration, here are two more flower cards that I have created a while back while featuring penny black stamps and using similar techniques. Thank you all for watching!